This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. Now, this morning on Sunrise, with Election Day fast approaching, one candidate to be Oregon's governor says no thanks to a big endorsement. Plus, taking a tougher stance on bias crime, how Oregon is trying to keep the suspects from reoffending. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Daisy Caballero for a first look at our Saturday forecast. Good morning, Daisy. Good morning, Tim, and good morning to all of our viewers. Now, many of you have been calling us last night asking what is in the sky? Is it a UFO? You can see that the bright streak right here or on your screen, actually, you can see the bright streak across the night sky. Now, here's the answer. Early Friday, a SpaceX rocket launched into space carrying 53 Starlink satellites. Wow. Right after uh, launches in the past, we have seen similar streaks across the sky as well. Now, actually, sure enough, my partner actually captured this exact everything that you guys are seeing here on your screen while we were at home. So a lot of people saw it. Now let's go ahead and start and switch over to our radar right now. We're not seeing a whole ton of activity, maybe just a little bit of that cloud coverage coming off of our coast. But for the most part, we are going to be pretty clear and that's what we're expecting to see a little bit later into our day as well. And the reason as to why that is, is because a mixture of a high pressure system slowly but surely moving into our area. But that's not going to be lasting for long because we are going to be a little bit cooler um, these next few days until we hit mid next week. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at your seven day forecast. So today we're going to be in those mid 80s um, and slowly but surely we are going to start to warm up those upper 80s for Sunday. Monday coming into Tuesday will really start to warm up, but take a look at Wednesday and Thursday mid to upper 90s. Back to you, Tim. All right, Daisy, thanks a lot. Cool vi video and images of the satellite launches there. Uh, we start this half hour in Hillsboro, where investigators say a police officer was attacked before shooting the suspect. KGW's Catherine Cook breaks down everything we've learned so far. Around 1 o'clock Friday afternoon, Hillsboro police responded to Southeast 11th and Washington. It's where they say one of their own officers was attacked. He then shot the suspect. According to police, it happened while the officer was standing near his patrol car. Civilian witnesses. Uh, saw one of our officers attacked and uh, as he was being attacked um, he responded with lethal force. Sergeant Stuart Kelsey said no one else was injured. There are no outstanding suspects or threats to the public. The attack happened in an area familiar to Hillsborough police right behind their West Precinct building. It was a rapid response obviously. It's also along TriMet's blue line which disrupted Mac service for several hours. Neighbors tell us police canvassed the area looking for more witnesses, though no one we spoke with saw the attack or knew who the suspect was. As for how either the suspect or officer are doing, police wouldn't share that Friday night. I can't at this time. It's an ongoing investigation, and Washington County Major Crimes is called out to investigate the scene. Uh, the name of the officer involved in the shooting has not been released at this point, and we'll be sure to keep you updated as we learn more over the coming days. Well, the Washington State Patrol has arrested a suspect for pointing a gun at people on the interstate in Vancouver. A well, call started coming into 911 around noon on Friday, reporting a man in a vehicle aiming a gun out his window. The suspect drove off, but police aircraft managed to track him down up in the Auburn area. Troopers took these photos we're showing you. They arrested the suspect while he was stopped at a bank in Auburn. Turns out the man was also wanted for two shootings in Portland earlier this week. He's now in jail in King County. And turning to Portland's homeless crisis, the city is now banning homeless camps along school routes. Mayor Ted Wheeler announced an emergency declaration on Friday. The mayor says this is to keep kids safe and sidewalks clear as students head back to the classroom. Camps are also banned within 150 feet of school buildings. A newly released report shows how many homeless people in Oregon have died so far this year. A releasing this data is now required under a bill passed by legislators last year. So according to the Oregon Health Authority, the number of homeless deaths in the state this year is 207. 
74% are considered deaths of natural causes. We talked to Scott Kerman from the Blanche House, a Portland nonprofit that serves people living on the streets. We should urge um, caution as to drawing um, too much of a conclusion from the natural death um, count. Um, taken at face value, it may seem like, oh, well, you know, you know, most people who are homeless are dying a natural death. And perhaps we imagine that as we might imagine our loved ones passing away naturally. Um, I suspect it's not necessarily the case. Uh, Carmen says he hopes to get more details from the new report in order to help find solutions to the city's homeless crisis. In the race for Oregon governor, unaffiliated candidate Betsy Johnson has rejected an endorsement from the former Oregon Republican lawmaker Mike Nearman. That's according to the Oregonian. Nearman is the one who helped violent right-wing demonstrators breach the Capitol building in Salem in December of 2020. Johnson said about her rejection, quote, he broke the law, he incited violence at our Capitol, and he's an extremist. I reject his views and any extremist who would try to tear the state apart. Oregon House Republicans joined Democrats in 2021 to expel Nearman from the legislature. Republican candidate for governor Christine Drazen was the House minority leader at that time. We've got some intriguing new information and more questions about state lawmaker, a state lawmaker in Oregon who was arrested at the Clackamas County Fair. James Hebe says it all started with a cigarette. Last night on The Story, our Pat Doris talked to him to try to sort out all the details. Heeb said he was at the fair Wednesday talking with voters. Around 10 o'clock, he said he'd had a few drinks and went to hang out by the rodeo grounds to meet some friends and walk home. A lady came up and was like, you can't be smoking, no smoking. And and I, I was she's like, all right, whatever, and kind of blew her off. And she's like, I'm going to get the police. And I was like, all right. I, I, don't know, I didn't really think much of it. Before long, he said three sheriff's deputies from Clackamas County put him in handcuffs and arrested him. He was charged with disorderly conduct and interfering with a police officer. I asked him what he did to get those charges. The lady told me no smoking. I was just like, OK, you're just kind of rude um, and just kind of blew her off. And yeah, I, it was, you know, outside. I was off by myself. I just, you know, I, I know there's not supposed to be smoking on the fairgrounds, which in hindsight, I wish I, I wish I, you know, would have waited till I had left. But I, you know, I just never, never in a million years thought it would have uh, blown into something so big. And why did she say, okay, I'm calling the police? Were you, you're saying you were blowing her off, but, you know, sometimes blowing off is just shrugging and looking the other way. And sometimes there's some choice words involved. Yeah, no, I think I, uh, it was mainly just me just being like, okay, whatever. I, I didn't never raise my voice at her. I never called her bad names or anything like that. I just kind of was like, just blew her off. I was like, okay, whatever. Who, are you? you know, leave me alone, essentially. And now, if you're thinking, come on, there's got to be more to this story, I agree. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office is not telling us any details, though, about the arrest. I can tell you that he has a background that includes several misdemeanors and violations. He also pointed out that he's a Marine combat veteran. We'll bring you an update when we get more of the story and it starts to make more sense. And a reminder for in-depth coverage, deep dives and of course Pat's take. You can catch the story every weekday at six only here on KGW. Well, now to the efforts to make a statewide policy change after a man was released from jail last month, immediately after being charged with bias crimes. Police say Dylan Kesterson punched a father and his five-year-old daughter in a racially motivated attack in Portland in early July. Uh, both victims are of Japanese descent. Kesterson was released hours afterward and had since been accused of at least three prior racist attacks. Now on Monday, a state subcommittee supporting, uh, supported changing the policy so that people who are charged with first degree bias crimes are not released before their case is heard by a judge. Right now, guidelines require that only people charged with more serious offenses, including violent felonies, sex crimes, and domestic violence be held in jail until they go before a judge. Advocates would like to add bias crimes to that list. And so 
having the Supreme Court include bias crimes as a hold until arraignment type of crime, I think gives some assurance that the system is treating that crime very seriously and protecting the public. In order to move forward with the change, a committee has to make recommendations, and then it's up to the Chief Justice to amend the order. If and when that happens, each circuit court will have to amend its guidelines. Well, OMSI hits a planning milestone for a project that's been in the works for 10 years. We'll look at the plan that's meant to bring entertainment and housing to Southeast Portland.